What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the channel. And we are here for our newest Madden 21 realistic rebuild and it's with the New York Jets. Now we are going to be using the start today files or whatever they have in Madden. We'll be forcing a loss here against the Bills because that game actually happened. So we're the 0-7 Jets. I was able to make a trade on the defensive side setting Steve McClendon to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, apparently it was for like a six round pick. And the Bucks don't actually have... So I got a fifth round pick. I upgraded there. But we are pretty much in a seller's mode here. As we get in, I'll tell you right now, my plan is to trade away as many players as I possibly can. It's, it's going to be as unrealistic of a realistic rebuild because, you know, it, there's there's the old, the old cliche of a rebuild was let's try to get rid of everyone and just quickly rebuild the team as fast as possible. But in the case of the Jets, really, I should be trying... Like, if I'm looking at more so players that I want on the team, who are players... That for the next four years or so, I think can be fixtures of the team. I'm, I'm going to try to trade Sam Darnold. Uh, I'm looking at the backfield. There's not much there. Looking at wide receiver. I, you know, I, I think Jameson Crowder is a very nice weapon to have. I'm, I'm going to try and keep him. I think he's an underrated slot. You could also argue, obviously, Denzel Mims. Big draft pick. I'm a fan of Denzel Mims, excluding what he said about Philadelphia. But everyone else is potentially up for grabs. Perriman coming over from the Buccaneers. I mean, maybe we can see if we get some value there. I, I don't know. Teams that need a deep threat. There's not much to go on. Becton, for sure, on offensive line, he's been the best tackle of this year's draft class. Uh, I Well, left tackle. I think Tristan works playing right tackle. But Becton has been sensational. So he's definitely going to be a fixture of this team. I, I think you can look at, you know, Clark. Maybe we could try something there at right guard. Adoga at right tackle. But generally speaking, you know, uh, so far, out of everyone on the offensive side of the ball, we realistically have most likely Denzel Mims and Beckton from the rookie class and maybe Jay Crowder. So on the defensive side, uh, you know, it's still... Maybe there's something there with Franklin Myers. He's only 23, so maybe continue to grow and develop him. Quinton Williams, in real life, there's a ch there's a report that he's on the trade block. My intentions in this rebuild is to keep Quinton Williams. We get, there's not a lot of talent on this roster, so the guys that are talented, the guys that do have upside, the guys that do have a high ceiling... You know, I don't want to ship off from them. So we have him. We have Nathan Shepard, the Canadian. Now I'm just moving him into D-tackle because they don't have a D-tackle on the roster. Uh, on the linebacking core, I'm going to probably have a little Gator bias and throw Jabari Zuniga into the starting gig. Linebacking core, Mosley, Williamson, Onwuasor, Blake Cashman. I think in real life, I would absolutely love my Philadelphia Eagles before the trade deadline to make a trade for this man right here. I think this guy would be a huge, huge upgrade for the Philadelphia Eagles defense. So that being said, I'm going to throw him up on the trade block because I can't trade Mosley. Mosley's, um, I think it's COVID, right? So Avery Williamson is going to be some guy that if I can keep him, fine. If I can find a trade partner, better. Uh, Jordan Jenkins, another guy. Trade block, for sure. Into the secondary. Gator Bias will probably let me keep Brian Poole on the squad. But if someone wants to see her, who I'm pretty sure has a depth trade, which he does, he's on the trade block. Um... Uh, Free safety. McDougal's going to be on the trade box. I'd love to go with Ashton Davis. Go with the youth there. And strong safety. More Gator bias. We'll rock and roll with Marcus May. And then you go on the special teams. Shout out to the hidden dev rookie punter, Braden Mann from Texas A&M. So I'm going to see if I can wheel and deal just a little bit here as we force loss this rightful Bills loss. And we'll come together with what we have been able to acquire in terms of picks. And we'll really get into this rebuild. All right, starting things off, we're able to get a fifth-round pick from the Chargers for some reason. They they really want it and had a lot of interest in Bradley McDougal. So there we go. First one off the bus. From the Kansas City Chiefs, trying to redefend that Super Bowl title. We're actually able to get a third-round pick for star dev corner Pierre Desir. But looking at the defense for the Kansas City Chiefs, they absolutely would need a player of Desir's caliber on that back end to help out with, you know, Honey Badger and all those guys. So, hey, it's a good trade. Jordan Jenkins next, gone. As a team that's trying to double up on Edgewood's house. They just traded for Everson Griffin, and now they're getting Jordan Jenkins. The Detroit Lions sending us a fourth-round pick for the solid rotational edge rusher. A rare player-for-player player trade, but an upgrade for us nonetheless because we only have Frank the Tank at running back. We're able to send pa Patrick on Wusor, who actually thinks a pretty goddamn underrated uh, linebacker. was really good with the Baltimore Ravens. Ended up now he's just kind of like a rotational guy on the Jets. We're able to send him to the L.A. Rams for running back three behind Cam Akers, behind Malcolm Brown, getting Daryl Henderson Jr., the second-year player out of Memphis. We were able to get a seventh-round pick from the Minnesota Vikings for some reason for Chris Hogan, so I will also take that contract. Lastly, let's see what we can get for Sam Darnold. 
So the optics for this trade to go through look a little bit weird, but I think personally, if I'm the Jets, I'm looking to get a two and a three. If Josh Rosen got a two and a five from the Dolphins, when that whole thing kind of played out with the Arizona Cardinals, I think Darnold's a better quarterback than Josh Rosen. I think he's a, he has more upside than Josh Rosen. He has more better tape out there than Josh Rosen. So I was able to get a two and a three from the football team, but I had they just absolutely would not go through it unless I didn't give them Frank Gore. So Frank the Tank and Sam Darnold on their way to football team at two and a three in next year's draft coming back for the Jets. Now I think we're about done trading. Let's get through this year one, whatever's left of it. So let's take a look at our scouting because clearly there's one player that we want to acquire, and that is Trevor Lawrence. But we're going to do our due diligence. We're going to make sure as we hopefully will be finishing picking with you know a top three pick, if not the number one overall pick. So we'll get Fields, we'll get Trey Lance all locked up. Uh, this is the newest edition of my draft class. I just did a big update. Uh, Mac Jones is in there now. Zach Wilson, who I had as a high-regarded quarterback at next year. I think he's most likely going to cash out and come out this season for BYU. Um, I don't really know any other huge shit. But again, looking at positions of need here, I, you know, it's good to get a good idea of running backs because we absolutely could want to bring in someone else to complement what we have now with Daryl Henderson and Michael P. Ryan. Uh, I think Kylan Hill might be worth it, but I uh, might as well get all these scheme fits. Wide receivers, another position we absolutely should be looking at. We have two first round picks, right? Is that this year that we had the two first-round picks? What year was the first-rounders that we got from the Jamal Adams trade? Can I see my draft picks, please? We have two first-rounders this year. A whole lot of draft picks. Two first-rounders next year. We're going to be able to cash in here. But we have two first-rounders. So that needs to go in to how we scout because we're going to be able to get two guys in the first round. So let's get, our, let's get our wide receivers here scouted. Probably not all going to be there. But, um, I mean, you know, maybe someone, maybe one of the Alabama wide receivers slip or something like that. So coming up from our bye, we are, <laughs> rightfully so, 0-9. Uh, we have two breakout scenarios here. I think this is Jamison Crowder for sure, right? He's looking to go from star to a superstar. He should be eating in the slot. Three touchdowns, 150 yards against the Chargers defense. Good luck. And is this Denzel Mims? It is. So I don't think I've ever seen two wide receivers come up with a dev trade scenario. I am such a fan of Denzel Mims, though. Then I think I'm going to hop in. I'm going to... I don't want to go 0-16. I'm not going to let it happen on my watch. So we're going to try to come in. Try and win. I'm not saying that me coming in is going to make this absolute dumpster fiver team. Because I'm going to try to do whatever I want to try to do here with Joe Flacco at quarterback. But even if we can lose and still find a way to get Denzel Mims a dev trait, that's probably best case scenario. Also, in terms of contracts, there are players that hopefully want to buy in to this complete rebuild that we're going to be uh, trying to accomplish here with the Jets. So we want to keep our, our young talent in-house when we can. So let's look here at uh, Brian Poole, uh, Gator Bias, whatever you want to call it, but I'd love to keep him here who's 30. He wants a little bit more money. Avery Williams, like this is going to be a tough sell, man, because a lot of these guys... I don't know if Marcus May, maybe? A lot of these guys probably want to go on and win. And uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of taking this as these guys want to. We got Avery Williamson wants to resign, but the two Gators are playing a little bit of hardball. So, I mean, Perriman's another interesting one. Do we really want to keep and hold on to him, or do we want to look else? I feel like we should look elsewhere. But uh, yeah, let's try to get May and Pullback. There's no point trying to get rid of all of our good players. If some guys want to stay, then we'll convince them to stay somehow. All right, 100 yards, Denzel Mims. Uh, I forget what Crowder's is. Mims is the most important. Let's just try to force feed him, man. Let's, you know, what's the worst thing that happens? We force feed him, and it results in a lot of turnovers, and we still lose. Because at the end of the day, I, I even think if we win a game or two, we're still probably going to have first pick. But we kind of are in a scenario that we absolutely need to get first pick, and uh, a, a win is going to be detrimental to us getting a hopeful new franchise quarterback. But we'll start with a nice little screen pass here to Henderson, get some yards, but ultimately we got to keep force feeding Denzel Mims. I'm audible. This was going to be a run. But now Loki, in the back of my head, I'm like, well, if we just get Crowder a touchdown every time we can try to get a touchdown, there could be a way we swing two dev traits this game. Nice little slant cheese touchdown to Jay Crowder. Ooh. Ooh. Let him go. Yak. Making plays after the catch. 
All right, third and six. Got this weird little route here that I'm going to try and hit Crowder for a second touchdown. Or we could go Mims in motion. But I want to go Crowder. And it's almost jumped and picked by Chris Harris. We're, we're in, the, we're in the, the business of going for it here. Let's do it, man. Crowder, Mims, top of the screen. It's going to one of them. I'll force it into one of them. Don't matter who. Someone's getting this. Crowder on the cut. Oh, my God. Through contact, the Desmond King second touchdown. Flacco is on fire right now. Come on, Mims. Come on, Mims. One hand that shit. Oh, oh, give me the depth trait. Oh, that was unreal. That's actually unreal pass Flacco. Flacco's still got a cannon on him. He's still got a cannon on him. Great adjustment, a little bit of a low ball. And there we go. Mims dev trade in the books. Now let's focus on Jamison Crowder. Right, I've tried very hard. I need one more. He's not even out there. I need one touchdown. Get outside the pocket, throw away. I, I need one touchdown for Jamison Crowder. And he's not even on the field. There we go. Top of the screen. It's a quick slant. Come on, get that dev trade. Let's get two freaking dev trades here. I don't like it. I don't like it. There's a face mask. Give us a new set of downs, please. All right. Powder at the top. I'm only looking at him. I'm gonna, every every chance. I, even if I, I get sacked ten times, he's the only guy we're looking for. He didn't get open there. That was good coverage. He's tied. He must be gassed. And you know me. I don't want to get this with a slant. I will if I have to, but I'm going to try these first two plays without slant cheesing him. Maybe that's a too tight of a window. Fuck! Great tackle, Flock. X, let him score. Give us the ball back. I might be able to get it with the yards. Let him score. I think I got five picks with Flacco today. And uh, Hayward's been on Crowder, and I think that might be his third pick. There we go. Oh, that got to be it. Last play of the game. Ooh, last play of the game. That might be it. Ignore the fact that I have eight interceptions with Joe Flacco. We had one goal coming into this. Was force feed Mims, force feed Crowder, and win the, and, and win the game by getting dev traits. And I think we did that. We needed... 150 yards from Crowder, which we got 14 catches, almost 200 for him. And we needed uh, 100 for Mims. I don't how do you, so I think we got it. I think we got it. Mission accomplished. All right, let's see this. So I know for sure we got Mims. Mims, I have no doubts about. He's going out to a star dev, which I think even could be valid for him to get right away, like naturally from the rosters. I think he's that good. But did we get with Crowder? I don't know if I needed 200. I did. Nice. It's just like that. Immediately improving our wide receiver core for whatever brand new quarterback we'll be drafting at the end of the season. My God, that was a huge gift for him. Eight points, baby. Eight points all going into physical. All right, let's bring it live. We're 0-13. We got the final three games of the season to see if we can even just get one. We pretty much have the number one pick locked up unless we go 3-0. Which is probably going to be impossible. The Rams and Browns are really good. But you never know. You never know. So let's see. Week 15, 10 win Rams squad. And we lose. But we have a player of the week effort. Oh, wow. Okay. It's Williamson. I'm going to say it was our old player. But he's thriving for the Rams. Glad. I'm glad it worked out for them. And we got Daryl Henderson. We have a running back to build for the future. Uh, but Williamson, 10 tackles, a sack, forced fumble, fumble recovery. Do it at all. Trying to... Find a way to salvage this season. Uh, I'm going to continue here in particular for guys that I think could be part of our long-term plans. So we got Becton. I'm all going to try to get them into a scheme fit. Get these guys ready for the first true year of the Lincoln Riley. We got Cam Clark there at right guard. I think he can be a guy that can develop into a long-term starter. Uh, Adoga at right tackle. We might got something there. He fits the agile build that we're looking for to scheme on this offensive line. And we'll just quickly spend all of that. In terms of my scouting, it's going well. Um, because we have so many draft picks, so I'm a little bit worried because I missed the first half of the season, essentially, of scouting. I'm not going to have um, really what I want in terms of scouting. But offensive line is something that we just simply can't ignore. 
um, given how bad our O-line actually is. So I, I'm just going to scout the rest of the offensive line, I think, and that'll probably be it. 9-5, and five, Browns up next. And we lose again. Oh, and 15. Uh, I mean, this team, if you think about the Jets, they're, as long as they have Adam Gase, I think even if you're a fan of the Jets, you're like, we deserve, we absolutely deserve to not win a game. Like, it's like you should be punished for having the shittiest head coach of all time and still employ him, right? So let's see. Can we avoid 0-16? Becton is going up. He's developing like an absolute monster. Does he have superstar death? He must. Yeah, I does. So I say he's developing like every two games. He's going up one point, which makes sense. At least in his rookie year, it's gonna slow down for sure. Um, we're going, we're going the top community sliders there for XP. It's one fifty. Uh, Zuniga, are you a scheme fit? We're gonna make you a scheme fit, Gator buy. I love the Gator buys here on the New York Jets as well. Full kudo. I think they have a you know tremendous general manager coming from Philadelphia, Joe Douglas. Uh, generally was pretty good. I mean, I don't know how much of our draft blunders we could throw up, but yeah, here are the sliders that we're rocking and rolling. As always, these are sliders that I've been using for a couple years now. Pretty much universal. 150, 150. Nothing, not a whole lot. Not really that drastically different from uh, default sliders. Like, you know, 25% there, 25% there, 50% tight ends. Fullbacks get touched just a little bit, but those are the sliders I'm using for people that are wondering. Um... And can we not go 0-16? Oh, 0-16. Congrats. Congrats. So we're at the Pro Bowl. We might as well at least see what our what happened for our squad in essentially half a season. Uh, Joe Flacco was the starting quarterback. And, I, was, I mean, honestly, knowing that I threw eight picks in one game, that's not... Those are brutal numbers for old Joe Flacco there. I actually might want to keep him on the roster as a veteran. Uh, Daryl Henderson finished with 700 yards, four touchdowns, 43 yards a game, three touchdowns there for P. Ryan. Crowder was huge, 77 catches, 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. But, I mean, I mean, I think he's so underrated. Like, I think, honestly, if I was someone knowing that the Jets were in full-on sell mode, he'd be the guy I'd probably want to pick. He's just always so consistent. Six and three for Denzel Mims. We got 400 yards for Herndon. 4-2 for Perriman. Nothing too great. I, Henderson over the backfield, I guess, 300 yards, 4 touchdowns. He finished with over 1,000 yards from scrimmage and 8 total tutties. So it was a pretty good investment for us being able to land him from the Rams in that trade. On the offensive side of the ball, uh, I mean, uh, whatever, sacks are... Like, those sacks numbers are actually very good. I assume they're only in half a season, though. So, you know, kind of expected. Over 100 tackles there for Williamson. 2 TFLs a sack and 2 picks. Over 100 tackles for Brian Poole. Had 5 Five interceptions on the season. Our sacks were absolutely embarrassing. But five picks for Brian Poole. Love it. Finished with the 30th offense in the NFL defense league. Might actually be a little bit... Yeah, 22. It's not too, too bad. Yearly awards. Russell Wilson was the MVP. And he kind of deserves it, being honest with you. AFC out played. He went to Lamar Jackson. I don't think we're seeing a single jet here. Bud Dupree was runner-up in defensive player of the year. Sure. Avery Williamson at number 10. Offensive rookie went to Joe Burrow. Defense rookie, they went to Logan Wilson with Ashton Davis coming in at number nine. Best quarterback went to Mahomes. Best running back went to Derrick Henry. Daryl Henderson, number six. That's already looking like one hell of a trade. Jamison Crowder was the best wide receiver. Would love for him to go up a depth trade, potentially to an X factor. That would be huge. You could key on, on that game that we hopped in and get a superstar if that does happen, but I'm not going to get my hopes up. Uh, for best offensive lineman, nothing. Best D lineman went to Joey Bosa. Best linebacker went to Bud Dupree. Avery Williamson, number 10. Best DB went to Brian Poole. He's a guy that could definitely go up a dev trade that I would be very, very much appreciative of. So we had some pretty solid, you know, individual success. Looking at the AFC, how many Jets are representing? We have Jameson Crowder, wide receiver one. He better go up a freaking dev trade. I better have an X factor when all is said and done. Um, defensive, ooh, Jesus. Maybe Williamson? Oh, Brian Poole is corner one. Okay. Shout out to James Prochet making the Pro Bowl there. Let's sit him here a week, see if we go up Dev Trait as we get ready for this Brown Seahawks Super Bowl. And on the offensive side of the ball, Jameson Crowder is a superstar X Factor. Let's go. First one free, Energizer. Uh, we'll get that next one very, very quickly, his final ability. But I, I still think to this day, if we're ranking. 
Top five slot wide receivers in the NFL. He is definitely on that list, and he's not number five. Uh, so we got a dev trade there. We had the dev trade in game for Mims. Specton was a superstar. So I mean, we got we got some solid fixtures here. Then you flip on the defensive side. Brian Poole went from a star to a superstar. We can upgrade him to uh, continue to make him a perfect scheme fit for Lincoln Riley's defense here. But that's ex that's exceptional. Like, how come I get like? It's just so weird. That's that's all I can say, man. It is just so weird how the dev trade scenario. But we, he made the Pro Bowl and was DB of the year. Absolutely should go up dev trade. It's just so weird that like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Like what justifies a dev trade? Zuniga went up a dev trade, which I'm very happy for. But is it deserved? Probably not. He had 31 tackles and three TFLs. Am I going to complain? No. Am I happy that a Florida Gators maybe a chance to develop himself into something special in this rebuild? I'm pretty good with that. Did Basham have a dev trade? Or did he just go up? So that's a bug. There's a bug in Madden that whatever team you're using, your outside linebackers pretty much almost always go up a dev trade. Avery Williamson went up a dev trade here from a star to a superstar, which is great. Plus, we're getting C.J. Mosley back for next season. So the middle of that defense is going to be very, very strong. That's awesome. And then we had a hidden dev on our punter. I think it's just a star for Braden Mann. But that's about as good of a season as you could have for the Jets here. We go 0-16, which yeah, but we secure the number one overall pick. We have dev traits gained for Crowder, Denzel Mims on offense, for Williamson, Zuniga, Basham, and Brian Poole on defense. Pat myself on the back right there. All right, so now it's time to trim the fat. Uh, I think it just makes a whole lot of sense right now. Have Go into free agency with as much money as humanly possible. Plus, there's probably a couple ugly contracts here or there. Um, now those contracts are overly bad. Griffin... You might as well, you might as well hang on to him there because you're not going to get any further ahead by releasing him. Uh, Alex Lewis, sure, I can just draft your replacement, free up that five million bucks. McGovern, that's an ugly contract to have have on the books. George Fant, goodbye. There's five million bucks more towards the pool. Henry Anderson, there's almost seven million dollars. Thank you for your service. Uh. And I hope Mosley comes back. I hope Mosley just... It's one of those things that Jets so bad. He just acts like, Oh, you forgot that I was employed by you. I'm just not going to return. But we're able to free up a little bit more money now. So we enter free agency with probably almost 80 million bucks. Almost 90 million dollars. So now it's all about selling players. Because probably not a lot of guys are going to be rushing to join this team. Uh, I kind of actually want to bring back Flacco. I thought he did solid in the sim. But... In reality, we probably should get a legit backup behind Trevor Lawrence. If we get Trevor Lawrence, it might be Justin Fields. So I, I don't want to curse him. But if you need if you need a guy, you need a guy. I'm going to lowball. I'll see if we'll come in on a lowball. Old Fitz Magic returning. He probably is not going to take this. going to be like a 30-point bid. Let's up that a little bit. If we can get this into like the 40s, mid-40s. There we go. Something like that. We'll see if Fitzpatrick wants to come in. Be that developmental guy. Running back, Todd Gurley's there, 27. Little bit older than what I'm looking for here. If I wanted to jump on a running back to compliment Henderson, they're going to need to be definitely under 25. 25, 26 at the absolute most. So we have Tariq Cohen. That could be interesting. Uh, Gus Edwards, Darius Geis. I don't really want to be the redemption arc for Darius Geis right now. Kind of piece of shit. Uh, Fournette with that normal devs, a little ugly. James Conner. Maybe Cohen. Like, we'll see what kind of offer. Oh, he has an ACL tear, but we'll see. 26, 27, 28. A two-year deal. See, we'll take that. Just bring him in. See what happens. Uh, we're good at fullback. At wide receiver, we have Crowder and Mims. So we're looking for a wide receiver three. Could get one in the draft. In free agency, Josh Reynolds could actually be interesting. Uh, giving him a little bit bigger role than what he's had on the Rams. He's only 26. Josh Gordon's there. John Ross, the redemption story, get some speed, some more speed. If I'm Lincoln Riley, I'd be all about that. And just that, like, what better way to pad your stats, kind of, as a uh, as a brand new head coach, being like, I got, you know, I got John Ross, and I made him, I, re I redeemed him. I, I, I was able to find some sort of redemption there. But I really do feel like we'll be able to get wide. Like, those are going to be our two guys. We need someone else on the outside. We should be able to get them in the draft. But we might come back to John Ross. I'm intrigued. 
Uh, we had Gronk at tight end. Okay, there's absolutely nothing at tight end, which is a little bit disappointing. So that is a position I want to get better at. Offensive line. We have Becton, but we need a right tackle. Probably could just draft one. Yeah, we'll just draft one at guard. There's not much there. Forest Lamp already has a couple competitive offers. I mean, maybe we could... Something like a three-year... Round it up. Something like that, maybe. Even, like, he just... He got the dev trait. Maybe there's a chance we can make him into something, you know, serviceable. Uh, right guard, we're fine. Right tackle. Yeah, we'll just rock and roll with what we got. Defensive side. All right. Who fits our scheme? 3-4. Jernigan at DN. Not better than what we got. D-tackle. Nose tackle. We got, a, we, got a, we got some nose tackles here. Billings can be a nose tackle, but not that much of an upgrade. Puna Ford. That actually looks kind of solid for what we're looking for. Uh, Butler is not so much. But then I have Canadian bias. I like Nathan Shepard. Mm, we got it. We got it. We'll do this. We'll get Puna Ford here. 25. That's like, you know, that's a fair, that's a fair contract. Give him something 20. Let's give him a four year deal. See if he'll come. I'm not going to rebid on him though. If someone else comes in, swoops in by all means. You can have him. Quinn and Williams. We're good. Uh, edge rushers. We, I kind of want to capitalize on the dev trait there for Zaniga. So we'll rock and roll with him. Middle linebackers. We're good. Right outside linebackers. So we need someone else. Potentially we could get Griffin speed rusher. 26. Give him a chance to start. That actually is looking probably like our best option. And gives us a chance that if we miss on the draft on getting a legit 3-4 outside linebacker, we could have a we could have Shaquille Griffin go off. There's no other bids on him. Three-year deal. Jer, why not? Secondary. We got, uh, okay, let's start down here just a little bit. See what's going on for guys that are around 25, 26. Um, hmm. Not looking at the greatest. Mike Hilton is fairly solid. Do we just go with the Philadelphia Eagles approach of just having a bunch of slot wide receivers? Because you know, Mike Hilton, Brian Bull, pretty much the same style. No, we won't go crazy there. Marcus Williams at safety, but I, I do want to kind of develop Ashton Davis. I think Ashton Davis has a high ceiling, and I don't want to stunt that right away. And I'm strong to say Marcus May. Someone like Des King could come in. And again, though, it's just getting more slot corners. If we wanted to move him back to corner where he naturally started out his NFL career and played at Iowa. Kickers. I like Joey Sly. He has a huge freaking leg on him, so I want him for the full four years. We'll give him that contract, and we're good at punter. So those are my negotiations. No one, like no blockbuster type free agency signing or anything crazy like that. We got a veteran quarterback. We got a guy that's a serviceable guy with a dev trait. Good kicker. Shaquem Griffin, upside, intrigued. An intriguing edge rusher. Puna Ford's just a solid uh, D tackle. And then Tariq Cohen could potentially be a game changer for this offense. But ultimately, how this Jets teams get better from year one to year two, it is going to be through the draft. All right, first wave. Got our star dev edge rusher, our star dev guard, and our kicker with like 99 kick power. Both Puna Ford and Tariq Cohen also buying into the Lincoln Riley project here in New York. All right, probably can see this coming from a mile away, but with the number one overall pick, it's time. It's time to implement him in a rebuild. Trevor Lawrence, wow, he's actually not number one in my draft. All right, but there we go. The franchise, maybe the greatest quarterback prospect college football has ever seen, has ever produced. I, I you know, since I've been scouting, and that was like right around, you know, I, I wasn't into college when Andrew Luck was coming out of high school into college, but I was when he was in Stanford, and everyone's saying he's the greatest QB prospect since, you know, Peyton Manning was coming to Tennessee. I, I, I give the advantage to Trevor Lawrence. I've never seen a quarterback that literally looked like, yeah, he probably, he probably could have went like LeBron and gone straight from high school and went to the NFL. Not saying he could start, but I, I think that there would be plenty of teams that would have saw Trevor Lawrence in high school and be like, I will burn a first round pick and have him just sit there on my bench for like two, three years and then throw him to the wolves because he's that damn good and was that much of a franchise looking quarterback when he was in high school. All right, I'm willing to part with my final pick. God, of course, the Seahawks would be good. One and two of them. I have three third round picks. I'll trade. Actually, maybe we can give them the lower one. I want Kyle Pitts. I want a tight end. Bengals are my biggest worry because the Ravens have Waller. The, you know. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'll give him 85. Well, this is enough. This is going to be close. I feel like I'm just looking at, oh my God. I'm looking at teams that could be hurdles for us to get Kyle Pitts. And if we if he lasts past this one, he's going to go. Fuck. 
All right, it's a slaughter. Our draft board absolutely got slaughtered, but I need to try to trade up. So I was able to get our one, our highest third, and our lowest third to a team that always was looking to trade back, the Tennessee Titans, to move up to pick 18. Uh, <laughs> the draft has not been favorable. After the Kyle Pitts went, I was like, all right, Rondale Moore. He got he went off the board. I was like, oh, we can get Pat Fryermuth, the tight end for Penn State. He went off the board. Sean Wade was one of our last players. I was like, I could try to get him, and he's gone. So now here's where the board kind of looks. And, um, you know, I think we're going to have to get Breven Jordan. Wasn't overly confident they would still be there. But the fact that we traded up, Jalen Waddle's still there. Could be a nice pick. But, I mean, we're happy with our wide receivers. You have Tefele. We've used him. Cosme it's not a great pick. So, I mean, you could argue fairly. Like, what other corners do we have? If we grab, we have the first pick in the second round. So I can get one of Asante Samuel. Like, what is he? Mid, mid second rounder for Samuel. Tyson Campbell's a late second. Mukwamu is an early second. And Farley is a late first. So there's probably not going to be that big of a jump off between Farley, Stokes, Mukwamu. So when you're more so looking at tight end, we need one. I, I think the gap from Breven Jordan, who's an exceptional athlete, to Nicola in the third round it is noticeable. So we're going to trade up here. We're going to get our safety net for Trevor Lawrence. On the outside, I mean, safety net clearly is most likely going to be Jameson Crowder, but we, we can't miss out on any more tight ends. I particularly suck at drafting tight ends once it comes to the Madden-generated draft classes. So at pick 18, we got Breven Jordan, 73, hidden dev, number 25 in true value. So most likely he was not going to be there at pick 31. Uh, coming in 86 speed, 89 acceleration, 80 catch. I mean, definitely in the mold of one of those glorified wide receiver, big wide receivers that just plays tight end. But uh, he's really a legitimate, I think, first round talent. Now I was full on board getting a corner. Um, there's still two run. There's like <laughs> there's a lot of running backs here. We just we did just sign Tariq Cohen, but I mean we're we're in the business going BPA. We just got number nine in true value at 33 in ETN. I know running backs are getting undervalued here, but come on, come on! How you gonna let ETN fall to me in the second round? So the draft recap here, we saw the Trevor Lawrence pick. We saw the Breven Jordan pick. We saw the unexpected, given the fact that maybe our flashiest free agent was Tariq Cohen. The unexpected Travis Etienne pick, but that was clearly BPA. After that, we did a solid job with the draft. Uh, we had a lot of picks. We got some nice talent. We got Chase Lucas, the corner out of Arizona State, 67 normal scheme fit in the third round. Fourth round, we got Teron Vincent, who's going to be more so a defensive ender scheme, 69 uh, of Ohio State. We got Amonra St. Brown from USC, 67 normal. We got TJ Carter, the corner from Memphis, 66 normal, scheme fit. Navon Donaldson, 66 guard. Not really a scheme fit, but gives us some flexibility. Maybe we can shoot him out to tackle or something like that. He's a depth player. We got Ellerson Smith, one of my favorite small school players, 6'7", 245. He's going to be an outside linebacker. and He's going to have a chance to earn and, and potentially become our starting right outside linebacker, edge rusher there. Uh, let's actually move him. And see if his rating shifts too, too much. It might a point or two. I don't know. It's a crapshoot sometimes trying to predict where these... So he's a 64, moving him to outside linebacker. Ugh. A little harsh. Uh, sixth round, we got Marco Wilson, corner from Florida. He's having a terrible year at Florida, but there's some talent there. A little bit Gator bias. To finish up with the Gator bias, we got Kadarius Toney. Quarterback, was a quarterback in Florida. Moved to wide receiver. Very, very electrifying. Very, very difficult to tackle in space. And uh, we're very excited to have him on the squad as well to potentially be a death wide receiver. But clearly, ETN, Breven, Jordan are the bigger names. And the biggest name is our new franchise quarterback in the Big Apple, Trevor Lawrence. So the starting point of the 2021 season is where we are going to leave this one off as we leave the Jets as a 78 overall team. The work has been done. The groundwork, the first burn it year has been done. And now you just look at that, man. Three new Skill position players with hidden dev traits from the draft class. An X Factor and Crowder. Mims is looking promising. Back then, we threw in Forrest Lamp here on the offensive line in free agency. Offense hasn't looked better. That might be the best Jets offense they've had in a decade. Looking at the defensive side, it's it's coming together, man. It's coming together. Puna Ford, new addition there at nose tackle. We got Shaquem Griffin burning off the edge. Zaniga got a dev trait. Uh, secondary, maybe a little bit more worried about the secondary. We got Blessing on Austin and... Uh, uh, Bryce Hall here, a guy who a lot of people before an injury thought could have snuck into the first round last year in the draft. Uh, optimism is high that he can, you know, re you know, retool his career and punish everyone for letting him. I think it was a UDFA or they got him super late, like late day three. 
So I'm optimistic, man. I'm optimistic that once we fully get into this now with Trevor Lawrence, our franchise quarterback, things are going to turn around for the Jets, and we have a legitimate shot over the next four seasons to win a Super Bowl with this Jets team. But that will do it for me today, guys. Thank you for watching. As always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Working our way to 150,000 subs here on YouTube. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Helps out the video in the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you guys back here tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and peace out.